up on a hill overlooking this hometown harbor contemplating from an old white house it has a the king and i we stopped over here by uh, cafe 56 um, this is another building that's along the boulevard which is slated to be uh, demoed uh, in may this may 2012 this one here huh? oh boy yeah, I remember uh, this was my very first job out of high school. This was a community store. There was an area for patients and an area for employees. And we would have like short order cooking as well as deli services and stuff you would find in a uh, five have two or three dime. eggs in each hand. Oh, King, to this day, I could break like 12 <laughs> eggs in each hand and not break a yolk. Really, really, you got really good at it. Oh God, I use a butter knife. <laughs> I do, I, I remember this job very well because it was my, uh, it was one of my first jobs out of high school, but, uh, but I tell you, I really enjoyed the patience. That was one of my favorite things. Um, and the setting here was nice too, wasn't it? The atmosphere. Oh, very much so. Our favorite game was playing who's patient and who's staff, and I was wrong 50% of the times. That's good though, it kept you going, <laughs> kept you amused, right? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> But well, well, you know, that was the whole idea was uh, for employees <laughs> to assimilate into the place and blend in. Some blended a lot better than others. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember there was always a lot of activity out here. They were, the patients were always milling in and milling out. And I remember Jerry Creighton told me she would take Bob Creighton, our Smithtown Town Councilman now, um, she would take his old suits and she would give it to one of the patients. And we used to call this patient a professor because he would parade up and down the street here and he would act like he's doing a doctoral dissertation or... Oh, or you, mean, you mean wearing one of Bob's suits? Wearing right? one of Bob's suits or acting like he's, um, he's uh, before the Supreme Court. And I, I don't know too much about the law, but it sounded good. And then someone would come over to him and would say, you want to play some cards? And would immediately drop out. I said, okay, yeah, sure. And would sit down and play cards. He changed, for, right. And I remember nobody was a uh, was just in their life before the hospital. Nobody was a uh, doorman. Everybody was a former Broadway star, or everyone always had a flamboyant other. Although some people did, because we did have uh, many authors and performers here. But uh, it seemed a lot more well, patient. Cartoonist Percy yes. Crosby. Percy Crosby, who I met years ago. Percy thought I was a uh, spy for the CIA or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, that happens. Kind of odd paranoia, you know. We, we both get letters from, uh, from family members of former patients, and perhaps former patients, and because of the nature of mental illness, sometimes they give such real and believable stories about CIA and about infiltrating the hospital, and, but you have to take those with yes. a grain of salt. You also helped people over the years. Well, there was one blind patient. His family had no idea he was here. So I sat down. I said, right, you dictate and you tell me what. So we wrote a letter to his brother, and I wrote it, and he was dictating. We sent it to the brother, and the brother was so surprised. He was a patient here, came out and took him home. So, uh, you know, so in a sense, I was sort of a social worker, too, working yeah. on the wards, you know. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's just seeing the patients every day, even when I was working here, is that if I didn't see a patient for a few days, I would ask back to the ward, where are they? Is there anything wrong? Because that you become very familiar and you grow a deep affection and friendship for many of the patients. Uh, sure. Some patients were very tough people, but some patients were just very Some were delicate and fragile. Yeah, and you felt like you had to protect them in a way. If you're allowed off the wards, this is where you came. They had what they call a club card, and uh, your your relatives would put money on your club card, or you would you would work and get money, and then you could spend it and buy different things in the store. Yes, I remember one year they uh, they wanted to pick up a clothing line, and they made me model the clothes with my two friends. Uh, oh boy, uh, Kim DeWall and uh, Leslie. Oh, you mean model in there? Yeah, and it was oh, ridiculous gosh. because the girls were picking on me, and so we were walking around in the back with the clothes on, making odd poses. I have a few of those pictures these days, but uh, I don't know. It was a little embarrassing then, and uh, and still a little embarrassing now. But I kind of like look at it with a big smile on my face. Were you here in '79 and '80? Yes, I was. Well, remember the Friday morning uh, jazz things here with Tony Siago? But uh, they had some good talent. <laughs> Patience. Not mm -hmm. a guy named Victor who played the vibes and Tony on sax, Eddie on piano. That was some, and we have some wonderful pictures of that. And we have the video that you shot back in the uh, 
back down here and also across the street it shot a few uh, videos of Eddie because I remember seeing building 93 yeah. in the background. At, at, at all cost and at all risk. So I gotta get this guy down on tape, you know. Well, I, I think you're pretty safe now, huh, King? I don't know, I hope so. <laughs> what do you say we walk down a little bit and go down by building 93? Sure. All right, great. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Wish I could repair my worn out muscle and bones Like I can do for some of these aging homes Time has its own hidden agenda Won't be surprised If it don't coincide with mine I sure could use some rest Restoration 